Hey everyone, this is Ole Shinraki from Laddering Your Success, and you're listening to the LYS Podcast. Hello, good afternoon, and welcome one and all to Edge Steps, the online mentoring podcast powered by Laddering Your Success. I'm Ole Shinraki, co-founder of Laddering Your Success, and I'm honored to be joined by my fellow co-founder and LYS creator, Festus Amoye. Festus, how are you doing today? Hey, doing very well. A little, a little, little tired from the busy weekend, family, friends getting together. And so a little tired from that, but other than that, good to be here. Good to be here. Awesome. Absolutely. We're blessed to be joined once again by the future doctor of education as well, DeMarc Crawford. DeMarc, how are you doing today? Hey, I'm doing good. Happy to be here with my brothers. I see you sporting some new gear. <laughs> yeah, I'm official now, you know? <laughs> 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 what happened? I remember that episode of uh, Dave Chappelle. Wu Tang Clan ain't nothing to mess with. Wu Tang <laughs> LYS ain't nothing to mess with. No, I'm just, I'm just... So today we're going to be talking about tips for productive summer activities, in internships, and volunteering. As we know, we are entering the end of graduation season. I think we're probably finishing up on the last couple of graduations here. On so there are lots of students. Uh, at this time who are graduating. So you have students who are leaving high school and getting ready for college or students who are leaving high school and getting ready for starting a business and going to college. Uh, students who are getting ready to go to technical or trade school. Students who are getting ready to join the military. So much transition happening, right? And then you also have students who are leaving their junior year and they're preparing for their senior year and even though it's quite an exciting time it can be one of those times that has a lot of it can be quite anxious the work involved can seem very tedious there are a lot of different feelings you're wrapping up right 12 14 15 years of formal education and so it is this culmination of like a you know grand finale or climax of ending, you know, uh, your formal education, but you want to remain focused. Uh, one ending is a new beginning. And so you don't want to get wrapped up in the emotion. You kind of want to be prepared for everything that comes with that. And so what I wanted us to do today is I wanted us to kind of discuss just some things that we can do, some things students can do in regards to summer activities, internships, and volunteering uh, for planning ahead and setting goals for the next school year. And so when we do that, I always like to reflect for us to talk about some of the things that we are getting ready to do our senior year. So 20 years ago, around this time, I turned 18 years old. I was getting ready to go to University of Houston downtown. Uh, Festus was getting ready. What you were taking? You about to get on the? Was it a flight or a bus? Yeah, to, man. To North Carolina think, or Kentucky? Was, was it? Did I take a flight or to, was it a bus? Yeah, it was it? Was I think it was was a flight that went to a bus. I think to uh, South Carolina, relax, Jackson, Fort Jackson. And uh, it's really interesting that you bring this up because I think this is such a good point is like to just think about when you have the power. I think that's something that's not talked about in our community enough. It's just like, you know, when you're in middle school, high school, the schools have all the power. You know, if you don't come, your parents are going to get truancy tickets and all this other stuff. They're going to show up to court. And you know, we kind of had this thing about like, oh, well, I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. But here comes graduation season. And now it's like, you got the power. So what are you going to do with it? And so I think it's really powerful to have choices. And sometimes because of our financial situation, we tend to think we're limited in our choices. And what do I mean by that? Like people say, well, if you can't pay for it, then yes, you're limited. But at the same time, just like you said, you got internships, you got job opportunities, you got other opportunities that it might even be volunteering. 
And and I know in our community, it sounds like, man, volunteering and working for free. Well, what skills do you have? What skills have you built up? If you have not built up any skills and all you know is what the person next to you knows, now you're you're not separated from the competition at all. And one of the bigger things, if you're not able to articulate those skills, if you're not able to 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 clearly say, I know how to do X, Y, Z, and this is how that adds value to you. If you're not able to do that, you're going to have a real tough time. And so, like you said, when I graduated and I didn't know what I was going to do, I just knew college was important because people kept talking about it. My parents were big on it when they were living. And, and so I said, okay, how can I pay for college? Didn't know how to pay for college. Well, here comes the army recruiter and, uh, and yeah, I took that long ride. I do know I got off of a bus at 40. It's almost a big blur, to be honest with you. It's a very big blur because what they do is they take you to this place called MEPS the night before you're supposed to leave. And so your ship out date, you got all of these people who are leaving at the same time. And so they basically uh, sequester you to make sure you don't get away. <laughs> you know, they don't trust you to just show up when you're supposed to show up. And so you sleep in pretty much a hotel motel or or in maps. And then they 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 take you to your flight. And then once you're on your flight, you end up or you're on your bus, depending on how far you're going. You show up and then they take you on another bus, they escort you. And then once, once you pull up to that gate, then they, oh man, then that's when it's going on. The drill sergeant gets on the bus. You're not, you're mine now. Oh, God, forgive us. <laughs> but yeah, man, that was crazy time. Jamar, go ahead. Oh, well, before that, I just wanted to introduce or welcome our good friend, that guy to him be one and only Daniel Hill. How you doing today, Daniel? What it is, bro? What's good? Man, she said mean? over here full from yesterday, man. I ate too much of them, them corn, man. I ate 26 of them, bro. <laughs> Best of the guy then. Appreciate the invite. For sure. A good time was had by all, for sure. So, Crawford, if you can, just, just tell us about your senior year after graduation. What did you do during that summer? What was your mindset at? What were you thinking about in terms of? What were you, what your plans were after high school? For me at the time, my plans were not, were not so clear. I knew that I was going to college. So what I focused on was getting a job and working due to my financial status. So I worked, I got a job at Active Athlete. And so I worked there. That was a job I started and was there for like 10 years, but I made sure I had a job to try to figure out a way to start put things into place to meet my needs financially, such as I knew where I was going. I was going to TSU, Texas Southern University, not to get confused with Tennessee. Oh, here, I ain't paying attention. But anyway, so I needed to make sure uh, I didn't have a car at a time, but I needed to make sure I had money to be able to pay for a cab or pay for gas for people who I would ask to get me to at, from school. So it was just trying to set myself up to where I can make a way to actively get to him from school. I didn't know what I needed to major in or anything yet. So it was just more so getting myself in a mindset that, okay, life is now real. I don't know where I'm headed. So I got to just figure it out. So that's what it was like for me. So needless to say, it probably sounded like, you know, from Festus, I could see him, you know, with the, the backpack or his, all of his things and dude just like, you're mine now, soldier, what's your name? Oh, you know, from that to, you know, you know, kind of in the same boat as you, Mark, you know, I was, I was just kind of going through the motions, you know, I thought I was moving up in the world because I just got hired at Walmart. So I was like, you know what I'm saying? Thinking I'm moving up there in the world. I was an overnight stalker, you know? Um, but it seems like there was kind of like just a no direction. I mean, there was a certain direction, but you you were kind of just going through the motions, right? You're just trying to figure it out. Um, D Hill, do you remember your senior year after graduation and just where your mindset was 
what were you doing in that summer in preparation for whatever your plans were after high school? I was gonna feel just just a tripping off you being a number one stalker. I was like, man, who are you stalking, man? I'm like, <laughs> stalker, stalker. <laughs> Even worse. Oh, oh my bad. He's a pro stalker, Festus. <laughs> no, no. Shoot, I was really just work. I think I was just working. That I don't know if I was working at Kroger's, just getting ready, just preparing. I was chilling, man. I wasn't like y'all. I wasn't focused. Y'all. I was just like my, I didn't realize I wanted to go to my go to college. My mom asked me that February before I about to leave to go to college. No, that February she asked me, do you even want to go to college? And I said, well, shoot, well, shoot. I've already been going to parties for two years. Might as well go and see what it's all about. Hey, LYS fam, it's Ole. Thanks so much for listening to LYS. I just wanted to take a quick moment to talk to the parents. That's right, mom and dad, parents. Prepare your child for their best educational fit after high school with our comprehensive LYS Parents Guidebook. Our helpful guide includes a range of activities designed to help you better understand your child's unique gifts and abilities. Additionally, we provide valuable insights into the student loan debt crisis and offer practical tips on how to avoid accumulating large amounts of debt. Our ebook also includes a wealth of information on scholarships, grants, and payment exemptions that can help guide your child towards a bright and successful future. With our expert guidance, you can rest assured that your child is well prepared to make informed decisions about their education and career path. Don't let your child's future be in jeopardy. Invest in their future today by downloading the LYS Parents Guidebook. Simply go to lys.com forward slash parents to get your copy today. Now let's get back to the show because you know it's some good topics. So, <laughs> so I was like, but when I got there, I was, I think I was just working, bro. That's all I was getting ready and working. That's about it, bro. Yeah. So, you know, fast forward to now and thinking about students, one thing, you know, a lot of times we talk about, man, our students are, you know, insert negative thing here, right? They're apathetic. They have no direction. They're depressed. They're anxious. They're suicidal. You know, there's, there are all these different things, but there are, I think the average high school student generally has just a wider frame of knowledge than what we than what we had. And I think a lot of that comes from social media and social media and the, you know, insert whatever thing you want to put here, right? Kids are smart. They know how to get access to trusted channels and accounts to learn things that they're really interested in or want to learn about to help them understand the world. And so I think there there is a certain level of like intelligence that that our kids have, but the main thing that they lack is the application of it, right? And, or the practical use of a lot of these things. In the book, one of the first key principles Festus mentions is uh, don't knock what you don't know. And um, there's a certain level of humility and well, there's a certain, just a certain sense of humility that comes with that. And so it kind of brings me to my, to the point I want to get to is as these kids are kind of navigating or transitioning, right? 11th to 12th grade, 12th grade to <laughs> freshman year or whatever, you know, insert next step, next level here for you. What are some really good summer activities that students can get involved in? Um, and I'm not just talking about like workshops, like, you know, after high school workshops, but what are just some things that they can physically do or put themselves into to help prepare themselves, not just for the school year, but for what's to come after that school year? And what I can do is I'll just go ahead and throw something out there. One of the things that we love to do whenever we talk to kids is we always mention our be no do methodology, right? And so that kind of goes with our our EK guy or the EK guy tool or resource, right? So, you know, for me, that's just gonna start with you as a person listing the things that you love, right? Hey, LYS fam, it's Ole. Just wanted to take a quick break to let you know that even though the cost of college can be daunting, the LYS Scholarship Guide eBook can assist you in realizing your dreams. You can identify and apply for scholarships using the information, advice, and resources in our comprehensive guide. Also, we've provided a template for a successful scholarship essay to help you stand out from the crowd. Don't allow student loan debt to control you. Get your copy of the LYS Scholarship Guide eBook right away to take charge of your destiny. 
Simply go to lys.com forward slash parents to get your copy today. Now let's get back to that fire conversation. Let's start the conversation of introducing you to you. Because a lot of us have never done that. Even as adults, a lot of folks have never been introduced to themselves. So listing the things that you love. What does the world need? Right? What are jobs that you can do? And what are things that you're good at? And not just filling those things out, but thinking about those things outside of yourself. So when we say what are your good, what are you good at? There are certain things that all right, you may say I'm good at this. But one of the important things about the social portion of uh, is having folks that are like minded. So another key principle that Fess has mentioned in the book is be a friend to make friends. And so when you share the same qualities with other people, there's just a certain level of I'm not out to get you. You're not out to get me. So you don't have to change yourself. You can be who you are and the other person can be who they are and you all can just kind of grow together. and. Within that, you'll start to see that there are certain things that people will just naturally see from you. Just you being yourself. Hey, man, how'd you do that? How do you how do you do these things? How do you know about this? How do you do that? How do you do that? When people tend to ask those questions, you're doing them at a certain level, right? You're doing them at a heightened level. You doing you're doing those things a little bit better than the uh, status quo, so to speak. And so those things are garnering attention. Those are things that you need to pay attention, pay, pay attention to. Sorry. So when we say, what are things that you're good at? It's not only things that you think you're good at. It's things that other people may tell you that you're good at. So, you know, just imagine when you're a teacher and, you know, you're teaching in the classroom and someone walks by and they're like, dude, you're an amazing teacher. Like just the way you could, you know, do that with the kids. Da, da, da. And you're like, I don't know. I just teach. You know, those are the things that we pay attention to. So that's what I'm talking about. What are those activities, right? That could be helping out a family friend, you know, and, when, and after everyone gets a chance to talk, if we still have time, I'll tell you a wonderful story about a, a great mentor in that. But just what are some activities that, some activities that students can do outside of, you know, workshops and things like that to kind of prepare themselves for either senior year of high school or after high school? Those students that are after high school, or even like juniors, what I would suggest is kind of thinking about something, careers that they are interested, like three or four careers that they're interested in, and go to the uh, Bureau of Labor of Statistics website, which is bls.gov, and then kind of type in that career. And when they type in their career, they can get information as what do they do? And it shows the skills that are needed to be able to do their job. And so they can look at those skills and they can use that as a new skill if there's something that they're interested in. It's like, okay, maybe I don't possess this particular skill right now to be able to perform on their career. So with that information in mind, I now could try to learn a new skill. So if it's computer programming, something having to do with that, and U of H has a summer program where they are working with high school students to expose to computer programming, I now could try to enroll in that just to get some knowledge about that skill. And that can go for like any skill based on anything that you're interested in. That's a good hands-on experience because you also can see if I really want to do this, if there's something that I'm interested in, also gaining that experience and putting you ahead of the curve of making informed decisions based on knowledge that you gain from the occupational Outlook Handbook, which is on the BLS.gov, right? And so you can use that information to your advantage by helping yourself take classes or enroll in certain programs over the summer that they have for high school students to actually advance you. Yeah, I think that's I think that's key, you know, because I think Ole was bringing up a point earlier about uh, students and families not having that kind of hands-on experience. And so when you can blend the hands on experience of volunteering of of what you call it of 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 just getting the exposure with also the the didactic or the study experience and say, hey, look, there's already research about what's out there. Let me let me tap into that research. I think that's huge. 
the other thing that I think is huge is that that you're bringing up is try things that you're interested in. And it's very, very interesting because nowadays, you know, before in the past, let's say you know, 20 years ago, you would have to go knock on a door or walk into a place and fill out an application. Nowadays, you got a phone and you could just take your phone and you could be like, okay, let me hit up LinkedIn. Let me find five people who work at businesses that are close to me. Let me hit up Google and say, I'm a Google, you know, you know, the closest 10 pizza shops. And then I'm going to just call them and I'm going to be like, hey, I really was interested in learning about this. How can I get involved? You know, or just DMing people and saying, hey, look, I'm thinking about going in this field. What does it look like? Like there are ways that you can start to build those relationships. And, and I would say focus on that if you don't have the relationships. You know, because a lot of times your network is your net worth right? Your network is your net worth. And that's, you know, the game that's running around nowadays. And so sometimes we don't know what we want to do after high school because we're following our network. And so it's blind leading the blind. And it's like, man, I think I'm gonna go over here. And then he's like, man, that sounds like a good idea. I'm gonna go over there too, you know, versus really growing our personal network so that we can actually do what we want to do. And it's like, hey, man, great. I want you to go over there, go do your thing. But I found a mentor over here. I found somebody who is pointing me in the right direction. Now, again, because, you know, we do know teens listeners sometimes. So watch out for safety. You know, tell a trusted pa parent or, or, or mentor or teacher that, hey, I'm planning on messaging these people. This is what I want to message them about. Hey, I'm, you know, I have messaged these people. These are the responses that we got back. You know, so so keep them in the loop. Don't just go out there and be doing stuff that's dangerous. You know, people crazy nowadays. For sure, absolutely. Uh, thank y'all. Thank y'all for that. D Hill, did you have anything um, to drop in as far as like summer activities uh, for students going into their senior year or students who are just graduating, going into their next steps after after high school? I like what, so you said. I like what they, they both were saying, going into your senior year or getting out of it, right? That's what you said? Yes. Well, first of all, I like uh, the I was talking about, like, what careers and all that, like, what college you go to, don't, like, they were talking about the other day, like, whatever college you go to, and and if you don't have no student, I mean, if you got to get students loans, you got to make sure you, whatever career you choose can actually afford that, afford that college that you're going to go to. Because a lot of people go to these expensive colleges. You be seeing them all that complaining. Be like, bro, you went to a hundred thousand dollar college to be a teacher, bro. You're not gonna be able to pay a student loan off, you're gonna be on debt forever. So, yeah, like that's one thing that gotta focus on. Like, you know, doing stuff y'all said, do everything Crawford said, do everything Fest said, do start uh, getting an internship, start looking at what pays more, what what can cover what once you get out. Because just going somewhere because your friend's going doesn't work, you need to go somewhere that's best for you. So, you need to focus on that, definitely. Definitely. As you were talking, Hill, thank you for that. One of the things I was thinking of was I'm currently right now taking a course using Coursera. And this is the tough part of, you know, where, where our kids are. And I can't even say kids, where, where, our, where, where we are. Coursera, among many other websites and platforms, have free courses, right? Um, and these are free courses that are taught by faculty and staff at well-known and respected universities. And when you think about education and being a lifelong learner, I think at this age, it's very important to start to build the foundation of, of accepting the fact that you will be learning for your entire life, right? Um, and so I think, you know, when, when we have these platforms, we got to get in them. It's really important to get in the habit of using these great free resources to help us grow, uh, to help us understand the world around us. So this could be regarding, you know, uh, sciences, psychology, um, mental health, math, 
engineering, history. I mean, the, these resources are there for us. And, and it doesn't, the journey to, to being uh, a person of value uh, and a person of intent and, and, and of success, it's not it's not this glamorous thing, right? Where you know, I love the the videos where they wake up in the morning, and you know, they get up and they you know get their water. Their water's prepared. It's it's cad it's Cajun water. It's you know it comes out in a certain way. So the molecules are doing this, and then you know, it, I mean, it can be. Don't get me wrong, it can be. But in reality, I mean, we get we all get up the same. We brush our teeth. We stretch. We work out if we can. And we go, we live our lives, you know, it's so funny how we get so enamored with the process of living life. Like it's like, it's so unique to each and other person. I don't get me wrong. If you're a billionaire, the way you wake up is different. you got a nice bed. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not talking about that, but the things that we do essentially are all the same. Right. And so in that process, don't, don't overlook the simple principles that gear people to, to success. Don't overlook those things. They're, they're very, very valuable, right? And so, like I said, they have these wonderful resources out there. Make sure you go out, talk to those around you who you can trust uh, and ask them about those resources and, and start to engage in those resources. A lot of students who go to college, you may take online courses. Think about it. If you can take an online course now for free, well, if you take it again, when it comes time, that class is going to be nothing, right? And if you're going to a community college, you can say, wow, I've already taken this class that's been taught by someone who teaches at Duke or someone who teaches at the University of Southern California, right? And so just a couple of things to think about. So next, I want us to talk about internships, internships. So Jamark mentioned going on the OOH, the Occupational Outlook Handbook, and taking a look at some of those careers that you would potentially want to go into or, 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 um, or to have. Um, so I have questions for everyone. The first question is, why are these important early? Why is it important to do an internship early? And my second question is, what does an internship look like to you? To, you know, and that, that's for everyone. Why are these important early? Why is it important to get into an internship early? And what does an internship look like to you? I think it's important to get into an internship early because you get that firsthand experience and you are able to gain knowledge through that experience so you can make better informed decisions. What I mean by that is if I'm interested in this career and I try to get an intern early, an internship, I'm getting hands-on experience to see if that's something that I'm really interested in. Because so many times as a, a, a college professor, I see students come again, they want to do one career, they go through school, they do their career, and then when they actually get in the field of that career, they realize that, hey, I, I don't really like this, and now they're feeling like they have to start over. So when you take advantage of opportunities in school, so for example, my cousin, his name is uh, Kimar, he's in the 11th grade, and he got an opportunity to intern for the Ford dealership in the accounting area. So he starts in about, and that's, he got the intern through his school. And, and so he now gets to see if accounting is something that he's interested in. Now, luckily for him, it's a paid internship, but he's getting firsthand experience to see, hey, when I graduate, is accounting something that I really want to do or that I'm interested in? And he can use that experience to make informed decisions. So that's one benefit. Another benefit is getting that experience early on. So let's say accounting is something that he wants to continue in when he goes to college. He's getting paid, he's learning on the job, and let's say he keeps that job all throughout college. He now has a potential real employment 
opportunity. And let's say he doesn't want to work for Ford. He has, what well, he's a junior, so that's a senior, and let's assume four years of college. That's six years of experience that started with an internship that he can now put on a resume, assuming that he keeps that internship throughout his college career, right? So those are just two benefits that I could just think of. Again, just to sum it up, getting that experience so you can make informed decisions. So I stop so other people can talk. Yeah, I think, you know, balancing formal and informal education, like you said, is, okay, if I take that internship, if I get that internship, you know, sometimes we're not, and, and I'm not saying anything about you because I'm just talking in general, of course, is that sometimes we're not blessed to be able to go into a large company and get an internship, you know? So sometimes you might have to take that smaller internship with the nonprofit that either doesn't pay or pays very little or pays a stipend so that you could get some experience behind your, 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 your belt, you know, under, under your belt. The, the thing is, <clears throat> when you're at the age 16, 17, 18, 19, that's where you could afford to make some mistakes. And what do I mean by that? I'm not saying, oh, go to jail. I'm not saying, oh, do anything crazy. Cause usually that's what people say, man, you can afford to make mistakes. But the reality is you could afford to make some career mistakes as you're getting, and, and really it's not a mistake, mistake. You're just getting experience. And so to me, I would really look at that, that balance of informal, formal education and looking at things that are slightly, you know, unconventional, right? Transparent moment. I was back in the day when they had newspapers, I was selling newspapers in front of a store when I was like 11, you know what I mean? So my brother, he got this little summer job where he was doing newspapers. I don't want to go. I want to go. You know, I'm a little brother. It was like, man, you too, you too young. You know, I think their, their cutoff was. They were taking 12 or 13 year olds. I think it was 13 year olds. I, don't know, I want to go. I was like, all right. So they took me. And back in the day, you know, kids used to sell the newspapers in the in the middle of the medians, but they were like, now nah, you can look for that. They dropped me off at that Foodorama by, uh, <laughs> what's that Foodorama by? What's that? West uh, Belfort. West Belfort and 59. Yeah, I'm sitting in front of food. Like, oh, y'all just going to leave me? I thought we were going to be together. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so, you know, and, and yeah, you wake up early on a Saturday morning and drop you off at like six o'clock and you're like, what in the world's going on here? And so it's so funny because you just like, you just out there in the sun and, you know, and it was, it was, it was wild times, but I learned a lot from that experience. And so when you get that little informal training that, yeah, they, they used to give you, if I remember correctly, you used to got to get 25 cents for a newspaper sold. You know what I'm saying? No, no hourly, just 25 cents for a newspaper. So, and so when you do that little experience, it's like, oh man, this sucks. Oh man, this ain't cool. You know, but it starts to build up. It starts to build your character. It starts to, you know, again, give you, at least you know what you don't want to do. You know what I'm saying? With your life, like, ah, oh, no, I want to do this. So, yeah. It's very, very, very powerful. Very powerful. Uh, I think that's key right there, right? Is knowing what you what you don't want to do. I think I think that's that's just as important as what it was what you want to do for sure. And you actually hit another you hit another point I was going to talk about, which was what are some ways to think about internships outside of the box? We tend to think of them as a cut and paste kind of thing, where you're you're only working in an office, handling you know doing this doing that. You know, when you talk about internship, uh, an internship is basically preparing you in a field that you're going to be doing on your own. So that could be in anything. And so great, great point there. So I guess the last thing I want us to talk about is volunteering. Is do you is volunteering, is that a form of internship? Um, or what is, I'll just, I'll just leave it at that. Is volunteering, is that a form of internship? And what are the benefits of volunteering at this age if you are a, a senior a junior going into a senior, or if you are a senior going into your, you know, your next level, whether that be, you know, college or university, whether that be technical trade school, you're starting a business, uh, you're getting a regular job, you know, what are the benefits of, of volunteering? I think a benefit of volunteering is getting a, 
a true assessment of what their work environment would be like. So this is assuming like, hey, I think I'm interested in this field. There's no really interns available. So let me, internships available. Let me try to volunteer just so I can get close to that work environment to see again, if this is something that I'm interested in, if this is something that I like. And so you get that firsthand experience of being in that work environment, kind of see how that particular uh, job field operates. Um, and you can also develop relationships with the people who work there so that if something may come available and you're interested, they can keep you in mind. So you have the opportunity to learn about that particular job. And you also have the opportunity to meet people who are in that career field that you can, you know, just talk to, develop relationships and kind of learn what it's like to actually be in the field. I feel like so many of us can look up something online and research it. It, right but that doesn't really give us people's uh lived experiences in their field and so it's just gathering this information so that you can make again an informed decision great points thank you for that demar d hill hey lys fam it's ole once again you know these days many families are busy but want personalized attention we at laddering your success understand this dilemma and have created a unique approach to help guide you and your child with personal development tools to build a life of purpose. This intimate approach is helpful for those parents that feel the need to have a focused heart-to-heart -heart conversation deciding on the next steps after high school. We provide individual post-secondary planning, virtual customized college and career counseling, and scholarship guidance and planning. Our one-on-one -on -one sessions are tailored to each individual student to maximize their potential in the post-secondary realm. With our guidance, your child will be able to make their dreams a reality. Don't wait. Simply go to lys.com forward slash parents to get your copy today. Now let's get back to business on this podcast. Oh, uh, what do you think about, you know, volunteering? You consider volunteering, is that a, like a form of internship? Any any benefits you can see to volunteering? Um, volunteering shows people your worth ethics. A lot of times, see if you're gonna work hard, regardless if you're getting paid or not. So yeah, it depends where you volunteer. Like if you volunteer, it's yeah. I mean, volunteering always helps in some way. It builds your character, most of all. It shows it shows you gratefulness. But also, it's good to volunteer at places like you would like how to do stuff. Like even if you don't get an internship, you might go help. Like if you want to be in politics, you know how you. I think you volunteered one time. This you do for. Oh, did you get paid? I can't remember what, like, for the stuff them with voting. You want to be in politics, you want to help. If you want to get in politics, you learn how the whole process works. You might pass out flyers, you connect with the person running to see if, if you really want to do stuff like that. So volunteering is good, even if you can, in different ways to help you grow. Definitely, definitely. Thank you for reminding me. I totally forgot about that. Yeah, it was a paid, a, a paid work thing, situation. But I mean, you're you're essentially volunteering. You're helping with the local voting in the county. And for me, it was also a great opportunity to see the democratic process in person. Right? You you're coming up. You're collecting voting boxes and equipment from voting judges. Right. You're taking those things. And the, and, and the even better part about that is that's such a beautiful point. Thank you so much for that, Daniel. I was working with high schoolers. So I had a group of high schoolers. Shout out to a Leaf Votes. A couple of the kids were there and I was just chopping it up with them, you know, just talking to them about their plans for the future, things they wanted to do. And that right there, in essence, is the informal slash formal form of of education or of experience that you get that Festus was mentioning earlier. Just imagine if you're thinking about going into engineering and someone who works for engineering in the county is working at the voting site, which is exactly what happened the first time I uh, worked an election. There was someone who worked in engineering for the county right there. And I was just talking to him for a good 20, 30 minutes. We were just talking about the roles, his role within the county, all these things. So just imagine if I'm a high school and, and I see this person. I, any, any question, 
right? Short of, you know, <laughs> an inappropriate question is at your fingertips. You can ask this person, right? What school did you go to? How was it? Was it boring? Was it hard? Was it fun? Did, were you in any activities? Were, are there any societies or uh, groups that I should join? Whatever you want is at your fingertips right then and there. And, and these are the things that happen when you kind of put yourself out there. You get to do those volunteering. You, you get to join in those volunteering opportunities. If you're in the Houston area, I highly recommend a website called Volunteer Houston. And, you know, just wherever you are, if you can just look up your city and just look up volunteering opportunities and jobs for the youth. I, I know one of the most popular jobs when I was younger was lifeguards at the pools. Um, and so we're entering summer now, and that's one of those great job opportunities that are there. Great chances to network with folks within the city. So those opportunities are there. And for those that are older, one of the things that we used to mention is volunteering for things that that help you in, in just your normal day of life. So, you know, one of the things Festus and I used to talk about was helping out with Habitat for Humanity. You know, I have a, there's something that, you know, I've always wanted to, I've wanted to be able to build certain things and what better way to get in-person practical experience and learn at the same time than by volunteering for some of these um these organizations that are geared towards these fields that you may be interested in right and so just a couple of things of, of note to remember festus go ahead was there something you want to say yeah throw, throw in there hire houston youth h-h-y so if you yeah. go online yeah. HireHoustonYouth.com, or you could just Google Hire Houston Youth. Again, those summer jobs that are available, meaning, you know, whether whether it be uh, lifeguarding or just different opportunities like that, they're available for you to grab up. So, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. All righty. Oh, I thought I had my still here. All right. So I think that is going to end it for today. This has been a great topic something great like a jump off for uh, the students who are going into their senior year congratulations you're almost there don't get that senioritis right you know I was talking to professors i've been taking that class so that translates to like a, like an inflammation of your senior bone <laughs> so I'm i'm tripping out but uh, don't get that senioritis man this is just the beginning enjoy the time that you're gonna have, you know, I always have fond memories when I look back at my friends and the great teachers and, you know, things like that. So enjoy those moments, but be looking forward. Start to hone in on your talents, your skills, your abilities, what you're good at, what other people tell you that you're good at. Start to look within yourself, figure out what the world needs. If you ask every single person, they're gonna give you some different things, right? That's gonna start to lead you uh, into a, uh, uh, a greater understanding of yourself. So wish you all the best. Remember, LYS is always here as a resource for you to use, uh, no matter what it is, right? We want to help you find your success so you can start your journey to generational wealth, right? Not just, phys not just physical, tangible, but mentally. All right. So thank you so much for joining us. Please like and subscribe when you see this. Make sure you follow us, YouTube, get your ladder in your success, Instagram, be no do underscore LIS. What else am I missing? Facebook, just do a search, ladder in your success. All right. We will see you next week. Festus, please give them the phrase that pays. Well, listen, there are legitimate excuses for not going to college. There's no legitimate excuse for not getting an education. And we will see you on the next episode. Oh, you're still there? Well, thank you so much for listening to the LIS podcast. 